In the Chinese culture, numerous well-known folk tales have been passed down from one generation to the next. Many young Chinese children grew up listening to these stories. Other than serving as a form of entertainment, folk tales are instrumental in preserving a culture by providing modern generations with a glimpse into the thoughts, traditions, and beliefs of their predecessors. These tales can be transmitted through oral storytelling or recorded in writing. For example, one renowned collection of Chinese folk tales is Strange Tales from a Chinese Studio, written by Hu Songlin during the Qing Dynasty in China. It compiles supernatural tales, legends, and folklore featuring a diverse cast of characters, including ghosts, demons, and spirits. Since I was young, I have always loved listening or reading stories, particularly those with Chinese elements. Out of all the folk tales that I have come across, The Butterfly Lovers, Liang Shan Guo Yu Zhu Ying Tai, is one of my favorites. Hence, I thought that today is a good chance for me to share them here. The Butterfly Lovers is a story of two young lovers, Yang Shan Guo and Zhu Ying Tai. Ying Tai, who is a young lady, disguised herself as a male so that she could study from a renowned teacher at a Confucian academy which was known to only accept male students. It is in this academy that Ying Tai got to meet Chan Guo and they became fast friends. Often studying and spending time together, in spite of their differences in their family's economic background. Over time, Ying Tai slowly developed feelings for Chan Guo. However, she hid her feelings and did not reveal her true gender. On the other hand, Chan Guo had never suspected her as being a female and always thought of Ying Tai as a fellow brother. The truth only comes to surface when Ying Tai receives news that her mother has fallen sick and is commanded to return home immediately. Ying Tai, unsure if she may see Chan Guo again, decides to confess her feelings to him. However, she did not do so directly. Instead, during their last few days together, she tried to leave some hints to Shan Guo. But Shan Guo was confused and did not pick up anything. In the end, Ying Tai enlisted the help of the Academy's master's wife to tell Shan Guo her true gender and feelings and asked if he would like to pay her a visit at her home. At last, when Ying Tai returned home, she realized that the news about her mother's sickness was false and it was a ploy by her family to persuade her to return home. She received bad news that her family had promised her to another man, whom she had to marry. Distraught, she tried to get out of the agreement, but was told by her parents that they could not break out of the agreement for fear of opposing the groom's family, who were a very powerful family and had huge influences in society. When Shan Po finds out from the academy's master's wives that Ying Tai was a female, only then he finally understood Ying Tai's previous actions and hints. Almost immediately, he makes arrangements to visit Ying Tai. However, upon meeting Ying Tai, he breaks the news of her arranged marriage to him. Heartbroken, Chan Po falls ill and eventually dies. On her wedding day, while on the way to her groom's place, Ying Tai makes a deliberate request to visit Chan Po's grave. Just as she reached Chan Po's grave, 
the sunny sky suddenly turned gloomy, and strong winds started blowing heavily. Overwhelmed with grief, she threw herself onto Charlotte's paws' grave. Miraculously, the ground opened and she jumped inside before anyone could grab her. Then, just as quickly as the sky had turned back, the sky started clearing. And to the surprise of everyone, a pair of butterflies happily fluttered upwards to the sky. Chan Po and Ying Tai were finally reunited in death. The story of the butterfly lovers is often considered a tragic and enduring tale of forbidden love, societal norms, and the power of love beyond death. Firstly, I admire Ying Tai for her independent thinking and determination for knowledge and growth. Most females of that time were not very well educated and were taught only a limited range of subjects with a primary emphasis on moral virtues or domestic skills such as embroidery, reading, music and etiquette. Despite living in a time when education for females were discouraged, Ying Tai was willing to go against societal norms to disguise herself as a male, just so that she could satisfy her ambition of learning new knowledge. I think that she is really brave and admirable. Secondly, Ying Tai is someone who will stand up for what she thinks is right. This is demonstrated by how she would rather end her life than go ahead with marrying someone she does not like. When she is forced to the age of a thief and she does not like the path that is ahead of her, she chooses to remain true to herself and protest by ending her life. While I do like the tale, committing suicide is definitely not something that I stand for. I think that our lives are precious and no matter how helpless of a situation we may find ourselves to be in or how dim the world appears to be, we should never fight suicide. There will always be a way out for those who are willing to seek help or consider alternative solutions, such as by looking at the problem from a different perspective or from a higher angle. At the end of the day, committing suicide does not solve any problem and will only end up causing pain and regret for those closest and nearest to us. It is ultimately a selfish, individualistic and hurtful act. However, although I don't support suicide, while reading the story, I tried to put myself in Intai's shoes and empathize with the constraints she felt. I imagine that at the moment, she must have felt that the world was bleak and meaningless without Shampo. I can't imagine how painful it is. At some level, it's kind of similar to being laid off or being rejected from something you had worked hard for and deeply desired. Except that the pain of losing someone to death is infinitely more times magnified. The feeling of abandonment and sudden loneliness makes life not worth going on. Food taste, blend, and blue skies have turned grey. To add on, Ying Tai was forced to marry someone she had never met before. While arranged marriages was, were the norm back then and a milestone to mark the girl's adult food, it was definitely hard for many young girls to go through. From her eyes, her future seemed bleak and even terrifying. Through her life, Ying Tai has always tried to stand up for her own thoughts and fight fate. While she can be considered to have been successful in some of her attempts, such as securing an education for herself, the death of Shan Po and her impending marriage to a stranger was something that she was powerless against. As a headstrong character, 
it must have been something hard for her to swallow and accept. Perhaps if Shan Bo was still alive, Ying Tai might have chosen to elope with him. However, after his death, there was no longer a chance of it anymore. Therefore, not willing to accept her fate and wanting to remain true to herself, Ying Kai decided to end her life to ultimately escape from the red dust. In Chinese culture, there is a saying, Bai Fa Song Fei Fa, which means white hair parents sending off their black hair children in a funeral. Dying before one's parents is seen as the greatest thing that a child can do to his or her parents. In a traditional Confucian environment, children are taught of the importance of obedience to one's parents and demonstrating filial piety by taking care of them till old age. As a scholar herself, in the days before her death, Ying Tai must have felt deeply conflicted. Therefore, I believe it was a decision that was not taken lightly. She must have felt really disappointed and perhaps even angry at her parents to the extent that she would rather her parents undergo sorrow after her death than her endure the unha- unhappiness of a loveless marriage. From another point of view, perhaps she felt that suicide was the best way out of the situation. While contradictory, her death could also be another way for her to express filial piety to her parents while remaining true to herself. Given her personality, in time must have considered running away and not go through the arranged marriage. However, with the groom's family being powerful and influential, out of fears that they might cause harm and trouble to her parents, the best way for her to get out was through her death. Only her death could persuade the groom's family to drop the matter and her parents would remain safe. At the same time, Ying Tai would be released. While tragic, the story stands on a positive note where Shan Po and Ying Tai are reincarnated as butterflies. As butterflies, they are no longer subjected to societal constraints imposed onto them. They are free to flutter, unite forever, and enjoy the beauty of the world together. The fact that they are reincarnated as butterflies instead of humans again somewhat reinforces the Chinese expression of Lysen Puto Miren which expresses a sentiment where someone, the a woman, expresses a desire or preference to be reborn as something other than a woman in their next life. This often stems from the gender inequality that a Chinese woman often has to face in her life, that she is unwilling to be born a woman again. Maybe the author of this story wants to express that the human world is complex, and that in this world, only the animals are truly happy. Hence, butterflies are chosen to represent the two lovers' fate. A recurring theme, the drama and suicide. I would also like to make another note on how withdrawal and suicide is a common theme in Chinese culture. In many Chinese stories and legends, it is often applauded as a brief final act of defiance against the wrongdoings of society. Many times we see a main character when faced with a difficult situation chooses suicide in order to uphold his or her integrity and moral values. For example, to express his grief and despair over the fall of his kingdom to an enemy, 
Chi Yuan, who was a patriot and had once worked for the queen until he was betrayed by those around him, decided to jump into the river. Similarly, when Tu Shi Liang was betrayed by a man whom she had gone through many sacrifices and given up her career and life for, she chose to express her disappointment by dramatically dumping her jewelry box and ending her life by jumping into the river. On a more subtle level, throughout Chinese culture, there are also numerous stories of mountain dwelling scholars such as Lao Zi and Zhuang Zi, who have chosen to live a hermit life and withdraw from society due to their disagreements with modern societal values. Not surprisingly, as folk tales often reflect people's beliefs of that time, we can also spot this theme in Chinese history. For example, when the Ming Dynasty fell to the Qing Dynasty, there were many individuals, including fishers, scholars, and loyalists, who chose to commit suicide rather than submit to the new ruling power, which was seen as a foreign power, as they belonged to the Manchus instead of the mainstream Han ethnic group. Therefore, one can observe this common theme in Chinese culture. It is indeed a final act out of desperation and when one is pressed against a wall. In conclusion, I really enjoyed reading the story of the butterfly lovers. It opened my eyes to the lives of the Chinese people in the past and enabled me to further appreciate the current privileges I enjoy as the new living in the modern era. I also think that there are some tricks from the main protagonists that I can learn from, such as her determination, independent thinking, and desire for knowledge and learning. I would like to end this video by sharing some interesting videos that I found that's related to this popular folk tale for us to appreciate. Being a well-known and beloved story that has been passed down through generations, many art performances such as operas, movies, and songs have been influenced by this folk tale. For example, in a more modern context, Karen Chun who is a competitive figure skater, has skated to the popular Butterfly Lovers song several times. I really like watching her skate performances which I have attached below. The end.